Production support for InFocus provided by Easel. Your favorite images on canvas, more beautiful and affordable than ever before. Easel.com. Welcome to In Focus with Eden Lane. Later we'll visit the Arvada Center during the opening ceremonies for Unbound Sculpture in the Field. But we get started at the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center. We'll meet Chief Curator Blake Miltier to learn about a special exhibit, pieces from their permanent collection displayed as never before. But first we meet their brand new president and CEO of the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center, David Dahlin. I'm so delighted that we're coming down to Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center, not just to visit the center, but to meet their brand new president and CEO. Thank you for making time for us today in this beautiful setting, in this exhibit in your gallery. Yeah. Thanks, Eden. It's great to have you here. So tell me, you've been in Colorado, you were telling me, for 25 years, mm -hmm. but you made, your, you made your name, you made your, your livelihood here in the Springs area, but as a business person and working with faith-based organizations. Correct. Not exactly the profile that one normally thinks of as someone who now wants to head an arts organization. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, it was actually very interesting because I had to make quite a full court press with the board of directors to even have them consider my really? resume. Really? Um, yeah, because I, I have a very non-traditional background for running an arts institution. Mm -hmm. I've been running a very, very large charity here that uh, was a global charity focused on helping children in poverty. So mm -hmm. I've done lots of global things, lots of running large organizations. Um, but you know, the, the arts world is a different world. So, um, but I, I knew enough about the Fine Arts Center to know that uh, the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center has a great history and a great tradition in its programming areas. We have a museum, we have a theater, we have a fine arts school, mm -hmm. and each of those functions runs really well and they've got great people running them. But they've really needed someone to provide overall leadership to the organization and the institution and to really advance the Fine Arts Center within the broader Pikes Peak community. And not just branding, but leadership and fundraising and structure. Yeah, yeah, leadership within the organization, leadership external. Um, the Fine Arts Center is this very historic institution. We mm -hmm. go back to the very you know, bedrock of Colorado Springs. The founding mothers of Colorado Springs started this place. I like that you acknowledge that too. That yeah, was really it's great. Yeah. And, but there's a whole, huge part of the population in Colorado Springs that doesn't even know we exist, much less what the offerings are here. So we've got a big branding marketing challenge to help ourselves be known within our own community and then also the broader regional and national community. Mm -hmm. So what was the biggest stumbling block that you think they had about considering you for this really important position? Yeah. Clearly it wasn't business background or fundraising because you yeah. were accomplished at that. So I, think think it it was? I think it was twofold. I think it was one that you know the the, his, the the expected thing to do would be to hire someone who comes from running another museum or another mm -hmm. you know, multidisciplinary arts organization like this one. So one was just breaking that convention. Although I think the board was really quite open to that, knowing that what they've experienced in the past and what they really thought you know where they're at right now in their organizational history and trajectory, that they were really looking for leadership more than they were for. Um, kind of technical expertise in the arts field. Because that exists here. That exists here. We, they already had that. So they knew, okay, here's what we've got. We've got this solid foundation of people who are expert at what they do. Um, and what we really need is a community connector, a fundraiser, an overall organizational development person to, to lead and manage the organization. So I think that, that hump many of them were over, although I think they did have some concerns about will the community accept that. Will not the community not accept? Colorado Springs in general, but the arts community that um, uses? both. I think oh. both. You know, both that you know, would it be great to have somebody coming from the you know the Whitney, you know, that has come to lead the Colorado Springs Fine mm -hmm. Arts Center? That would sound like it has cachet. Um, yeah. So I think it's know, kind of fast, fabulous that it's someone from Colorado Springs. Well, that, that was a piece that was in my favor. Is that they had candidates from outside the the region and the city. And they like having somebody who, who knows the city, even though I haven't been intimately involved in the Fine Arts Center, I know the city. And I especially know like the north end of the city, mm -hmm. which is a part of the city that we have trouble actually attracting 
to the Fine Arts Center I think and to downtown. This is the campus area or downtown yeah, area. Yeah, and but but a lot of the people on that side of town don't come downtown. Period. Period. And so we're trying to help raise the awareness that we're a cultural center down here, not just for things like the Fine Arts Center, but there's a whole big music scene, whether it's mm -hmm. you know, the symphony or whether it's a, a garage band. There's all kinds of cool stuff happening down here that people should want to take a part of if they knew about it. So anyway, that was obstacle number one. I think the other obstacle was um, I'd worked for a long time in a faith-based organization, and mm -hmm. clearly the Fine Arts Center is a secular institution. And so was there a concern about uh, me trying to impose a certain religious or hmm. spiritual or uh, worldview framework overall on the Fine Arts Center. And so I had to address that with them, you know, very directly that, you know, w what's the mission of the Fine Arts Center? You know, it's really a human expression. It's a challenging perspectives. It's a, uh, you know, to some extent I see arts as a, a branch of philosophy almost, of mm. how do we have a place to express and be exposed to different viewpoints, different philosophies, different understandings of the human experience and learn and grow from that. So I help them understand that I'm deeply committed to that, that we're a diverse population, we have unexpected variety and how do we learn and grow from that and part of our mission here is to bring the world to Colorado Springs yeah. and also Colorado Springs to the world. Mm -hmm. So the Fine Arts Center can play a really great role in that, in bringing exhibitions and artists and people from around the globe here mm -hmm. to expose Colorado Springs to that. And hopefully we can also raise our profile so that other parts of the country and maybe even the world see Colorado Springs in a different way, see us as a, a uh, you know, a little bit more like Santa Fe, that we're, we're, mm -hmm. we have some deep roots in being an artist colony and can yeah. we bring that back? I think a lot of people in, Col in Colorado even are surprised that Colorado Springs was and in many ways is an artist colony. Yeah, yeah. So a after you um, got past those two stumbling blocks, yeah. tell me about what your relationship was to the Fine Arts Center before you sought this position, before you even considered it. Yeah, um, I think I was a very typical um, Colorado Springs resident. And actually, I think that will serve me well in this role because I know- You kind of knew it was here. I, I knew it was here. I was a member for a couple years. Uh -huh. I came to a show a few times, came to a few exhibitions, you know, saw the big splash we did with Chihuly a few years back, yeah. noticed the expansion. Um, but a somewhat, you know, glad it was here, would show visitors, you know, oh, look oh, at this look beautiful building. Yeah. We have, we've got a fine arts center. You know, it gives a little cachet to, you know, we're not just a hick town. You know, we've got some interesting stuff The same way on. most business people would think of this kind of center if they weren't connected in another yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. So th that gives me a really good background to go, okay, how do I draw people like, like I was mm -hmm. much more deeply embedded into what's being offered here and to be part of this institution? Yeah, it's only been a few weeks, really, yeah. when you think about it. Oh, yeah. But clearly your relationship to the Fine Arts Center and the wonderful people who work here and, and have their work displayed here has changed in oh, that short time. Dramatically. Tell me you about know, that. And well, there's you know, there's something very special about being around art. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean and art takes many, many forms, but just to be able to walk into this building every day, you know, and then my office is here in an arts institution. I was gonna ask you this phenomenal. journey to your office, how many times did you get lost? Oh I did on to the way start to with. Your office. I mean just finding find, finding where we have staff scattered throughout this building because we don't have a consolidated office space. So just finding everyone's office is a challenge. It's a bit of a maze. But there's something good uh, about that. Well there is. There's something kind of cool about that and you know this building would be great if you were like kids on a, you know, uh, an adventure and yeah. the lights were all out and, you know, mystery night at the museum. There's lots of secret passageways and funky little oh. spots and doors that you don't know where they go and places around here. It's kind of fun. It is a beautiful facility. And now that, you, now that you've had your, your feet wet for, you know, five whole weeks, three yeah. whole weeks. Three, how, three, two and a half, actually. Two and a half weeks. Wow. Just two and a half weeks. Yeah. So I'm not expert at much yet. You're not expert at much yet. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. But how long do you think it will take before you feel like um, you're not new at this job anymore? What, what is your projection for how you will put your stamp yeah. on being the president and CEO of really a jewel in the middle of Colorado Springs? Right. I love that. It is a jewel. I mean, and, and one of my hopes is that more of the city will see the jewel that the Fine Arts Center is, because it really is a precious thing. Um, I mean, I'm diving in pretty fast, so I feel you like I'm to. getting, I'm, I have to, you know, and sink or swim, you know. 
so I don't think it'll take me too long to feel like I'm very much a part of things and integrated into things. However, I also want to learn a lot. It, it, it can be an easy mistake of a new leader to jump in and think, I know this, I know this, we're going to change this, move that wall, change that, we're mm -hmm. going to bring in this, we're going to change that, without knowing the context of you know, history and what works and what doesn't, what's been tried, what hasn't. So there's that combination of the freshness, and you've got a bit of that honeymoon period where you can make stuff happen, and that's great. Yeah with not being foolish and running into obstacles that 10 people could have told you, if you would have just asked me, uh, I could have warned you about these yeah. things. Um, and I really want to learn again from, there's a lot of different constituencies in Colorado Springs that have some kind of connection here. So I don't want to listen to just one. I mean, the, like the staff constituencies, one, the board's another, mm -hmm. our major donors are another. Um, but there's a whole lot of other groups as well. The other arts institutions, the Economic Development Council, um, the average Joe, the soccer mom who wants her kid to take art classes. I need to hear from all these different perspectives to help those form. Those soccer moms with their kids who are going to take classes, those are your patrons. They are. Next time. Absolutely. You know, and we are always need to be growing the next generation of arts patrons. So what is your first order of business do you see now that you've had three whole weeks to get your, <laughs> your feet underneath you? You don't even have any artwork up in your I office don't yet. Even, yeah, I don't <laughs> even, my, I have a blank canvas in my office still. So what do you see as your first order um, of business really? First order of business is really getting to know the staff and the board and understand as much as I can from their perspectives on what is the current direction because there is, there is a great momentum here already. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not... It's I'm not, not like it's floundering in any no, way. No, and I'm There's not really stepping into something happening. that's static. Yep. So there, there is a movement, there is a motion, and it's a motion here with the Fine Arts Center, but it's also a motion within Colorado Springs. There's a bit of an arts renaissance going on, and mm -hmm. we want to be a part of that. We have a, a, a huge, big exhibit that we're putting up next year about Georgia O'Keeffe O'Keefe. and that whole piece, know, and so right? we're going to create a whole year of O'Keeffe for 2015, and we, we want that to be a community-wide kind of event. So, you know, it's really understanding that, how do we make that thing very successful and, and a big, broad pitch. So I, I need to understand what's already moving um, and get on, in front of that to say, you know, it's like, you know, leader, get out in front. It's like, okay, where are we going? Well, yeah. um, so I, I got to figure where we're going where so we're I can going. get out in front of it. Um, and then it's really, uh, as lots of institutions like ours, you know, we have significant needs for funds. So we need to find historic funding sources and lots of new funding sources mm -hmm. so that we can both preserve this beautiful historic institution and the existing programs, but we want to be able to do lots of cutting edge, contemporary, relevant things. And I would like to see us have a lot more outreach into the community, but that all takes funds so that mm -hmm. it's not just people coming to see us, but how do we get out to see them? How do we do stuff, you know, art in the park? and things at the libraries and other kinds of places where we can kind of extend our reach more broadly in the community. I'm really excited to see what will happen next here. It was, it was kind of a surprise, but really a delight to see that they found someone right here in Colorado Springs to join the team as the president and CEO. I really appreciate you making time to talk to me, and I hope that we can come back and check in with you from time to time and see yeah. what's going on here. That would be great. I would love it. Come back and check in all the time because there's always something new going on here. That's true. So every week you can find something new to experience. We won't come that often, but we will come back again soon. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Eden. Now we move to another gallery space in the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center to learn about their special exhibit, Chihuly Rediscovered. So I'm really glad that you took some time to talk to us about the Rediscovering Chihuly exhibit here in the galleries. Chihuly is a part of your permanent collection, so what's different about Rediscovering Chihuly? What's different about Rediscovering Chihuly is that this is the first time Although these works, by and large, are part of our permanent collection here, it's the first time that we've had them all installed together in our new galleries that opened in 2007. Now, the interesting part about that is that our 2005 Shahuli show, the big blowout, gorgeous show, yeah. that was the real instigation of the process that got us these new galleries. Oh, wow. So you wouldn't have the space and these, these great Abil the ability to show the wider variety of art without Chihuly. Well, it certainly helped, and it certainly <laughs> inspired a kind of vigor in this community that led to the expansion. Now, of course, we know that in the Denver area, there's also a little installation of Chihuly. Was there any 
collaboration or coordination between the entities? Not originally, but of course we opened up a conversation with Denver Botanic Gardens. We've communicated them, with them before. They've borrowed things from our collection before. So we opened up a conversation about a little bit of a collaboration in terms of ticketing and so you get a little bit of a, a reciprocal discount between the two institutions. The idea being we want you to see both. I think it's really instructive to see both because we can see major size pieces here but also very tiny pieces. Then in the Denver Botanic Gardens you see them out of doors. That's right, that's right. And so I think you get a variety of experiences in terms of Shihuly. Uh, you know, you get that sort of big, bombastic kind of experience out there at the, at the uh, Botanic Gardens, and I think it'll be especially rewarding for folks who can go at night oh, yeah. and see some of those works lit. And then here, what we hope is that it becomes a more intimate kind of experience. Now we have just about two more months to see the exhibit in its entirety here, but it's always part of your collection. Tell me about the, the totality of what you have going on in the museum. Anytime you come here, whether it's during Shahuli Rediscovered or any other time for any other exhibition or performance or class, you're going to see at the very least three magnificent Shahuli chandeliers. One right there in the lobby when you walk yeah. in, one down in our deco lounge, and one right here in the galleries all the time. And we'll have Shahuli kind of spread out around the building as well. And what we hope is that folks really come to an understanding that this work lives here. Right? This is part of our collection, part of this community, part of this state, and you can come down here and see it anytime along with the spectrum of art that we're exhibiting always. You know, we always have other works from our permanent collection on view, we always have changing exhibitions on the second floor on view, and we like for there to be a wide variety of works, so there's a little something for everybody always. And you tend to really feature a lot of Colorado artists here. And next year, you're going to have a really important year that's, that's coming in the galleries here. Tell me about that. Oh, we have a huge year. And to me, a person who came on right at the beginning of the expansion, this is a year in which I think we're really fulfilling the promise of the gorgeous new galleries that we opened in 2007. We're going to have great shows that highlight works from our permanent collection, like our John James Audubon show, where we pair up his works uh, and his Prince of Birds with a fantastic Denver artist named Kevin Sloan, uh, contemporary artist. We're going to have Charles and Colin Parson, also Denver artists, really cutting edge contemporary work that I think is really going to get the mind going. And then next summer, summer 2015, we're going to have an exhibition called Eloquent Objects, Georgia O'Keeffe and Still Life Painting in New Mexico, which is going to highlight O'Keeffe and her contemporaries in the early to mid 20th century in New Mexico. It's going to be just an amazing year. It does sound like a very exciting program. How did, how did you go from this big program you have here to planning that kind of, I mean, what, that scale and the attention that that will receive? How did you manage all of that? Well, we plan about two to five years out. So we're planning all of these things simultaneously. <laughs> and that's, that's the real beautiful dynamic of what we do is that we're always in conversation with artists about upcoming possibilities. We're always in conversation with colleagues in the museum and gallery world about upcoming possibilities. And what we try to do is create a, a balance of programming throughout the year. I know that when we said we were going to meet in the gallery to talk about Julie Rediscovered, that we wanted to stand in front of one of your favorites, and that's the one on the wall behind you. Tell me a little bit about that piece, what makes it so unique, and why is it one of your favorites? Well, this is the Persian wall installation. I think it's one of Dale Shahuli's most subtle pieces in our collection. And it's a piece... No, in terms of color, I think. True, <laughs> true. It's a piece that really, I think, draws you in. And it's multi-layered. The closer you get, the more you discover the way light is sort of refracting through these glass pieces onto the wall, creating shapes that are unexpected, shapes that are, you know, of course, reflect the glass, but are 
existing in and of themselves. And I think it's a piece that for Shahuli had a great deal of historical reference. You know, the, the notion of Persian comes from, of course, the Middle East and the long history of archeological projects there and the long history of, of human uh, culture there. And so the color references that of the desert. The shapes for him reference those kinds of you know, objects that you might excavate out of the deserts uh -huh. uh, in archaeological digs. And so there are all of these magnificent layers that unfold for you in experiencing this piece. Is there a prescribed way to display this piece? I think that Shihuli likes for it to be exhibited a certain way, but the fact of the matter is, every time that it's reinstalled, it's going to be a little bit different. So I'd say that is the case with any kind of installation. And so although these works are from our permanent collection, the way you see them now, I think is very reflective of the Persian wall, that it's going to be a little bit different than you've ever experienced it before. Well, I really appreciate not only the work that went into creating this exhibit, bringing them all together at one time, but you giving us time to tell us about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we look behind the scenes to see just what it takes to install these major pieces that are part of Chihuly Rediscovered. Next, we visit the Arvada Center during opening ceremonies for Unbound Sculpture in the Field. You said that you sort of dreamed this up and didn't think anybody would take you seriously, but clearly they did. Yes. But what really did inspire pr presenting this project? Well, uh, my father is a sculptor, has been a sculptor for, you know, 30 years here in the state of Colorado, and I've helped him install sculptures, and I realized the lack of available space for showing some larger types of sculpture. and. Um, there are some places like Shadoni in New Mexico, but really there aren't that many here in Colorado. There's Loveland, but I wanted a modern and contemporary area that features, features that type of work. So what's well, better than 17 acres of open space that um, is in front of a regional arts center. And what a great advertisement, not just for the Arvada Center, but for Colorado artists in general because of all the traffic. Oh, 55,000 cars drive by Wadsworth and we encourage, I mean, what if we get 1% of those to pull over and take a walk around, I think they'll see why it's here. And once we find other grants and some other money, who knows, we could start to landscape it and it could really just blossom into a, a truly unique, unique region, regional attraction. Were you aware that it was part of the Arvada city plan to turn this into a part uh... Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen the uh, plan a lot, but uh, I, you know, it's like any master plan. It, some, it could, if there's no action, it just usually is in the master plan. So it, it was kind of fun just taking that action and going for it. And what does it feel like tonight? Now that we're here and we have almost all of the artists represented, two are two are absent tonight, but they're almost all here. What does it action. feel like? It's amazing seeing all these people walking out. I mean, I can't feel any better. And this was so much work. I mean, the sculpture you just don't place it. You have concrete foundations and heavy equipment and a lot of coordination and these sculptors stepped up to the plate and I kind of look them at look at them as the pioneer of of this uh, this exhibit and this space and there's a wide variety of medium presented here there yeah we have uh, stone pieces we have metal we have aluminum we have uh, wood and it, there are some that are combining using all of those elements and front some that range from six feet all the way up to 25 feet wow. so and what an amazing chance to see it all put together. Often we see a large piece like this. It might be the only thing in a courtyard, but these are displayed. You've turned it into a gallery. Uh, and that's why we mowed the path. You know, we had a lot of discussion about the path. Should we mow it or just keep it? At, and I really like the idea of kind of forcing people to 
to go on this journey and it's a quarter mile journey around and um yeah you know i think we can landscape it but you need 27 pieces or close to that to hold hold this space because a lot of these pieces look very small from wadsworth but yes, until you get to do, them right? so so we're, i'm really excited and also sculptors, art, artists in general, visual artists in general, but particularly sculptors who work in the scale often don't get to see the viewer enjoy their work the same way they're getting to see tonight. What, what does that mean for these artists? Well, as I mentioned, that you know, being, a, being an artist, sculpt, sculptors of this size, that takes a lot of resources, material, and, and money. And money. And, they kind of, you know, we, we had limited funds, but they stepped up and I said, you know, here's what, here's the vision. I want your help in placing this. And every artist was like, I am totally for that idea. Were any of these pieces commissioned for this event? So we, the way we, I would say the majority of the artists, uh, we asked them to do up to two pieces and the majority did two pieces mm -hmm. and they took the honorarium we gave them and created a brand new piece with that. So we most had one existing piece and one brand new piece. So it's kind of like old meets new. So it, so, pushed, yeah. so it pushed them because a lot of these sculptors, it's like after this one year, what am I going to do with this? Oh, sure. I'd love to show it at the Arvada Center. Oh, I could build a new piece with that. And, yeah. and the best was at 945 on install day, all these sculptors show up with their trucks and their trailers and we have all the equipment. And it was like they had a, a cacophony of just sculptors and it was great. It was powerful. Art it was very powerful. And this is all very powerful. Thank you again for your vision and your hard work in keeping the artists on view at the Arvada Center. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm honored. Thank you. What an amazing project for the Arvada Center to take on, bringing a sculpture garden to life in the field right outside the amphitheater. You'll have a chance to come and visit these major works by 15 Colorado artists throughout the seasons because it's here through September of 2015. You can find out more information about this project and the performances and all the other offerings at the Arvada Center on their webpage, arvadacenter.org. Remember to join us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching. Good night.